Welcome to a lesson on conservative vector fields. The goals of this video are to define a conservative vector field, define the curl of a vector field, and then determine if a given vector field is conservative. We will be talking more about conservative vector fields when we begin to evaluate line integrals. If we know that a vector field is conservative, it will make evaluating a line integral much easier. The integral of a conservative vector field is path independent and only depends on the endpoints. But this video will focus on determining if a given vector field is conservative. A vector field F is called conservative if it is the gradient of some scalar function such that the vector field is equal to the gradient of F. And the function little f is called the potential function of the vector field big F. Before we determine the test to determine if a given vector field is conservative, we first need to talk about the curl of a vector field. And I did make another video that addresses just the curl of a vector field. The curl of the vector field F is equal to the differential operator crossed with the vector field F. So to evaluate this cross product, we're going to evaluate this three by three determinant where the first row would be IJK, the second row would be the partial derivative operators, and the third row would come from the components of the vector field big F. So if we evaluate this three by three determinant, we end up with another vector field where the X component, Y component, and Z component ends up being the difference of these partial derivatives. And the test for a conservative vector field is if the curl of F of X, Y, Z is equal to the zero vector, the vector field is conservative. So if we go back to that definition of a curl, if this is equal to the zero vector, then each of these partial derivatives would have to be equal to each other to result in a zero for each component. So the shortcut rule for the test to determine if a vector field is conservative we can just make sure that all these partial derivatives here are equal to each other. Now if the given vector field is in R2 or two-dimensional, that three by three determinant is simplified and we only have to check to see if the partial of G with respects to X is equal to the partial of F with respects to Y. Let's go and take a look at our examples. We want to determine if the given vector field is conservative. Notice this vector field is in R2 or two-dimensional so we only have to determine if the partial of G with respects to X is equal to the partial of F with respects to Y. So F is equal to Y squared cosine X and G is equal to sine of XY. So we'll first test the partial of G with respects to X, treating Y as a constant. So we'd have cosine XY and then if Y is a constant, the derivative of XY would just be Y. So we have y cosine xy. And now for the partial of f with respects to y, treating x as a constant, we'll have two y times cosine x. And obviously these are not equal to each other. And therefore this vector field is not conservative. Let's go and take a look at our next example. Here we have another two-dimensional vector field. So again, to see if it's conservative, we only have to check to see if these two partial derivatives are equal to each other. Let's rewrite f as x times the quantity y squared minus x squared to the negative one-half, and g as negative y times the quantity y squared minus x squared to the negative one-half. Now let's go ahead and check our partial derivatives. We first want the partial of G with respects to X. So we'll treat Y as a constant. So we'll have negative Y times a negative one-half times the quantity Y squared minus X squared to the negative three-halves times the derivative of Y squared minus X squared with respects to X. That's going to give us negative two X. Let's go ahead and simplify this. So these two simplify out. This we have three negatives, so it's going to be negative xy all over y squared minus x squared to the positive three halves power. And now we'll check the partial of f with respects to y. So we're treating x as a constant. We're going to have x times negative one half 
times y squared minus x squared to the negative three halves times the derivative of y squared minus x squared with respect to y, that's going to give us two y. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Again, the twos simplify out. So we have a negative xy divided by y squared minus x squared to the three halves power. So these partial derivatives are equal to each other Therefore, this vector field is conservative. Let's take a look at a three-dimensional vector field now. So we need to calculate the curl of this vector field and see if it's equal to the zero vector, which would be the same as determining if these three sets of partial derivatives are equal to each other. So we have f would be equal to y natural log z, g would be equal to x natural log z, and h is equal to xy divided by z. Let's go ahead and start by determining these two partial derivatives. So the partial of h with respect to y would be x divided by z, and the partial of g with respect to z would be x divided by z as well. So far so good, now let's go ahead and check these two partial derivatives. Partial of h with respect to x, well that would be y divided by z. And the partial of f with respect to z, well here's f, well, that would be y times one over z, or y over z. So this also checks. Now we have one more, the partial of g with respect to x, and the partial of f with respect to y. So the partial of g with respect to x would be natural log z, and the partial of f with respect to y would also be natural log z. So all these check, and therefore the given vector field is conservative. That's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful.